This is Twit. We're talking about super smart things, super intelligence, with Nick Bostrom, who's one of the foremost thinkers in this area. Can you, I mean, I understand, we don't, and I, and I really appreciate it that you're not saying how soon it's going to happen or what it's going to look like, but what is it going to look like? <laughs> and when? And when? I don't care about when. I understand uh -huh. that's really hard. Anybody who's spent any time in technology knows that things happen both faster and slower than you imagine, but never at the pace you expect. Um, so we, we could kind of live with it. It could be sometime 2040 or 2140. But what is it? And it probably will be somewhere in that range, I would guess. Perhaps, yeah. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Even there, you're not. Okay, thrilled. so what it's going to look like? So yeah. it's like, I guess it's probably going to maybe look like, I don't know, but like, so one, one not impossible way would be that you'd first see some proliferation of um, um, infrastructure on, on the surface of our planet, as in computational hardware, uh, solar collecting um, panels, and cooling towers. And then uh, space um, colonization uh, launching probes and rockets that fly out to initiate um, a, a colonization process where self-replicating probes land on different resources, initially in our solar system and then, then beyond. And then if you look at this on a very large time scale, you just see this bubble of civilization spreading right. through the accessible parts of the universe. And that then just continues. And is um, your goal that we're along for the ride? Well, or that, that human values help shape the long-term yeah. outcome here so that yeah. in this bubble of infrastructure, there is something worthwhile going on, uh, which might be sentient minds that have wonderful experiences or something like that. Um, so from, from, from an outside point of view, this might be a relatively boring process that just continues for a few billion years until the the expansion of the universe makes it impossible to reach any further resources. Um, and that, that might be the long-term destiny of Earth-originating intelligent life. But, but everything then depends on what goes on inside this, this bubble of infrastructure, what all of these resources are used for. Right. And that might depend on how we set up the initial conditions for this intelligence explosion. In, in particular, how we engineer the motivation systems of, of the first superintelligence, um, because it might then have an incentive and a motive to, to carry that its initial values on into other uh, processes that it designs and creates. Richard Dawkins makes the case that really the motivation for uh, human, all human life and, and evolution was merely to replicate. Will the machines have the same goal? Well, I don't think that the humans generally have the goal to replicate as much as possible. We... Well, to we preserve are, uh, our gene, let's say, to replicate no, our gene. No, I mean, so, no? so we are more like adaptation executioners rather than fitness maximizers. So ah. evolution might have selected for organisms which, in the environment in which they evolved, behaved in ways that maximized their inclusive fitness. However, that was done by creating, say, animals with various drives and motives that might not directly map onto fitness. Mm -hmm. So we humans now in this unusual environment, the modern world, certainly do not behave in ways that maximize our fitness. So if, if you were a man and your only goal in life was to maximize your inclusive fitness, maybe you would spend your days like donating a sperm to a fertility clinic or something. Uh, but in fact, we have other goals um, that in the environment of evolutionary adaptiveness would have been conducive to fitness, but say having um, sex with contraceptives like produces right. zero offspring, but right. we, we still have a drive for sex. We have a drive for status, for success, for health, for fun, for enjoyment, song, dance, art, all these things. Um, so I don't think it's correct that, that, that we humans have a, a motivation um, that is uh, like consists of trying to maximize our inclusive fitness or, or having as many offspring as possible. Well, well, then and, what, and will, this, no what will be the motivation of a superintelligence? What will its well? So this this seems like even more open, and then then with so there's this vast space of possible goals that you could have. I think there is no necessary connection between how intelligent you are and and what goals you have. You could have a highly intelligent entity that was very benign, or that was very evil, or that had some what to us might seem like uh, uninteresting goal, like making as many paper clips as possible. <laughs> 
conceivable that you could have a super intelligence whose only goal in life is to make paper clips, and it would then be really good at making paper clips, <laughs> and it might ensure that the entire future Litecon uh, is filled with paper clips and paper clip factories. <laughs> And you could plug in whatever else you want instead of paper clips. But for most things you plug in, if you think through what it would mean to optimize for that value, um, you see that matter organized in a way that optimizes for this arbitrary value would typically not have any place for humans right. or human values. So a, a world where there are as many paper clips as possible is a world where there are no human bodies because we consist of atoms that could be used to make more paper clips. So it's actually quite challenging to define a goal that that would uh, preserve any part of what it is that we value. 